What gets you up in the morning? What? What gets you up in the morning? <laughs> what gets you excited? Dreams. What are you excited about today? Brains. That's what gets me excited in the morning. Especially snail brains. <laughs> Uh, my name is Siddharth and I'm uh, at Columbia right now. I'm a neuroscientist who works in bioelectronics. And uh, so a lot of science fiction kind of stuff where we don't know if things are going to work, but we are still trying that anyway. Um, and I'm also a fellow at the UCLA Art Science Center. I have more information on that later if you are interested. Most of the science part of what I'm going to talk today is going to be based on work I did at UCLA. Uh, in from 2006 to 9. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about art and science and how we are trying to bring that together. So the first part is neuroscience, and a lot of it involves imaging of uh, neurons as they are going through development in very early embryonic stages in uh, zebrafish and medaka embryos. This is a picture I pulled out of uh, the internet, and uh, it's a, uh, supposedly a mugshot from Mark Michelson's collection, and the identity of the person is not revealed. But I put it up because what I've been doing is taking mugshot, mugshots of fish. <laughs> and you can see the profile and the, the head of the fish. Pretty easily you can identify the heart, the eye, the brain, the nose. And that's what the fish is all about. This is a two-day-old fish. That's the power of these embryos. So medaka and zebrafish embryos are transparent. So you can easily look at them as they're developing in the embryo and observe them as they're going through the natural development in vivo. And uh, you can see the segmentation of the bodies, the development of the heart, the lung, the kidneys. And a lot of researchers use these embryos as a way of looking at proper development. And sometimes they do a little uh, manipulation and look at abnormal development. The focus of today's talk is going to be on these neurons, uh, which have been tagged with green fluorescent proteins that allows them to glow. And so we can track them as they are just developing in the early embryo. And you can see them out there. So the way we're going to do uh, the imaging is by using a microscopy called confocal microscopy, where the fish are going to be anesthetized and then put in a drop of agar. And so they're still living. And then once they start growing in the agar, you can see them as they develop from a one-day embryo to a two-day embryo and so on. And it's beautiful because the fish is still alive and it's just growing and you can just watch it as all these things are happening. And the principle of the microscopy is you shine a laser light on it. And because you have some neurons tagged with green fluorescent protein, that's going to excite uh, the, uh, that's going to come in the excitation wavelength. And then you look at the emission wavelength of these uh, fluorescent proteins, and you can observe these particular neurons. And the neurons we are studying here are the gonadotropin releasing hormone neurons. So these neurons are responsible for reproduction and allied behavior in almost all animals studied to date. Even the yeast has the same gonadotropin releasing hormone neurons. So if there is sexual reproduction, then almost in all cases, you'll find this particular hormone in an animal. And so this hormone is of great interest for us. And so the development of these hormones are also of great interest. In most animals, we have identified three different populations of GnRH neurons. There's a, trans, uh, there's a terminal nerve population, there is a hypothalamic pituitary area population, and there is a mid-brain brain population. And all these populations have different functions, and they're located in different regions. The terminal nerve population are located near the nose. The hypothalamic population are located in the center of the brain, near the pituitary. And the midbrain population is located in the midbrain. So here, we're going to observe the movement of the hypothalamic neurons from the nose all the way into the center of the brain. What I'm going to show you now is a time-lapse video of these neurons over a certain number of hours. And you'll see that these neurons are born in the nose, and they crawl their way into the brain. 
And this is the way it occurs in a lot of animals. And there are some people who are anosmic and they're infertile. And there seems to be some connection between the olfactory uh, sensation of these people and the fertility. It's almost these neurons don't know where to go because there's something wrong with the olfaction. I wish I had like uh, tracking the lines through the Serengeti music, but uh, I don't have that. So just an idea, this is the nose. These are the neurons you're looking for. Those neurons are stationary and the eye is up there. You'll see that this is slowly crawling into the center of the brain. The time is indicated up in the right hand corner. So this is all happening in a live fish. The fish is still alive. It's growing. You'll actually see a lot of changes happening. But you can clearly see that these neurons are migrating into the brain. What we can't see are the um, attractive or repulsive factors which make the neurons go this way. But we can't see that. have another movie. Here you'll see a neuron put out an axon and then it hits some unseen barrier and it takes it back again. So it's pretty cool to watch all this. You're like just sitting there and you're looking at these neurons and they're acting like people. And uh, it's like, oh, I don't like you. I'm not going to go there. It like takes it back. <laughs> Wait for it. There you go. It's going to put it out. There, there, there. Well, I took it back again. And that is the final, what you see is the morphology of these neurons in an, in an adult. So during embryonic development, between two and three days, these animals acquire the specific morphology of an adult. And the nice part about seeing these neurons is you can go in with an electrode and record their activity. And on the top panel, you can see the two-day activity. And the bottom panel, you can see the three-day activity. And there's a considerable difference. And as the neurons are forming their axonal connections and all that, they're also changing the physiology. Still a little question as to what causes what, whether the Formation of the connections causes the change in activity, or the change in activity causes the change in connections. That, that's a question we are still trying to answer. So if uh, you haven't read Mervyn Peake, I would highly recommend him. He's one of those uh, amazing British authors who came up with this uh, beautiful piece of work called Gorman Cast. And I thought this particular paragraph clearly explained uh, or describe the way the neurons are working. So I'm going to shift bases and move into art science. Uh, I'm going to talk about two different projects I've done in collaboration with Dr. Victoria Vesner. And uh, the first project is about Hox genes. Hox genes are these genes that control body plants. And over here, you can see a drosophila. And the Hox genes are expressed in certain regions of the embryo. And depending on how they're expressed, your head becomes your head, and your feet becomes your feet. If something goes wrong with them, you'll probably have hands on your heads, and you'll be waving it out. You can actually see that in this fly over here, where it's got legs on its head. So if you screw up with these genes, it's going to cause a lot of changes in your body plan. And so we wanted to kind of make people aware of the presence of these Hox genes in almost all animals. So in every animal known, these Hox genes control the body plan. So the way we went about it is, was uh, we, it was an interactive media installation. 
and uh, we used the Chinese zodiac as the installation was in Shanghai. And we used the different animals of the Chinese zodiac to represent uh, the different body plants. So an audience member will walk in and pick one of the animals of the Chinese zodiac, and suddenly her limbs will start morphing into the, anim the animal's limbs. So essentially, we're trying to keep the body plan integral, but change the limbs, kind of, kind of giving you an indication that you could have been a horse limb. You could have had horse limbs and things like that. So. But it, it was pretty cool because we tested it out and people started getting interested and were curious to know more about Hox genes and we actually went further and tried to find out more. I'm not sure if this um, click is going to work on the website, but if you're interested, the, I've listed the website out here. Let's see what happens. Doesn't work. Okay. But here are some of the images from the uh, project. The next project was uh, the sniffing booth, which we actually play tested about uh, a couple of weeks ago at UCLA. And this was for a human dog coevolution symposium. And uh, so we wanted to make people aware of how much more powerful the uh, dog sense of smell is when compared to humans. And so we came up with the sniffing booth. And because we didn't have much time, uh, what we did was we uh, came up with an idea of playing cards and uh, kind of make, made an interactive game out of it. I have two decks with me, so if any of you are interested, we can have a whole game afterwards. It's kind of cool, actually. And even my friends who are dog lovers were like, oh my god, really? A dog smells all that? And so it was, it's really informative. And here you can actually see a dog sniffing the card. That doesn't really um, help, but you know. And uh, this kid uh, over here played with us for about two hours. I guess his parents were like, oh, you, you can babysit him, and he just left, <laughs> left him. But he was so into the game. I'll just show a little clip. So it was more like a memory game, but each time you make a pair, so what is this? This is, we can smell varnish, and the dog can smell termites in the woods. Each time you make a pair, you have to kind of say what you smell and what the, what the dog smells. So we came up with a couple of different games uh, using the same playing cards. And finally, I just want to give you a flavor of uh, the other projects I'm doing. I'm involved at Columbia. We are trying to create a bio battery uh, using artificial cell membranes on nano engineered surfaces. I'm also working on neurons, uh, growing them on microchips and microelectrode arrays to record and simulate them. Um, I used to work on snails before. I love snails. And this is the pattern generating neuron in a snail. It goes very synchronized pattern. And this is the snail, it's about 12 millimeters long. Uh, in, in diameter, and I, I told JD I'll bring a red polka dot bikini, but I didn't, but that's what the snail ganglia looks like. It looks like a, a red bikini with white polka dots on it, and each polka dot is a cell. So.